Hi, I'm Janita Davis from the Black Cape. Um, to say this movie was a lot <laughs> is, is, is a understatement, but I can I'm, I was imagining what it was like for all of you on set. This is a mental health type of question. How did you all get up in the morning and prepare for the day? And how did you come down at the end? Mm -hmm. After, especially in those those moments and those scenes that Daniel just described and that Chinoya you just described. This is this question is for everybody. Well, I'll say with that scene, um, I had told the crew ahead of time we're going to shoot it in two takes. No matter what we get, it has to be two takes because I don't want to put Danielle through that more than two takes. And I there were a couple scenes where that was the directive and 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 that was a way that I wanted to show care for the actors. You know, Danielle, especially, you know, she she give literally gives her mind, body, spirit, soul to the performance. And I I wanted to be very mindful and protective of that. Um, and we had an onset therapist um who who was available to the cast and the crew and um and was it such an invaluable resource. And the parents of all the children, particularly Jalen's mom, Miss Ema, who's as part of the family, um, she was she was she was there in a critical emotional support system, and I've shared this story before, um, so I'm going to share it again, Jalen. But there was when we were shooting the scene where Emmett is abducted. After a take or two, Jalen had asked for a hug from his mom, and I just, just stopped everything, and he got a hug from his mom. And if he would have told me that he didn't want to shoot any more takes, we wouldn't have, you know. Um, and and so I always wanted to prioritize the emotional well-being and the humanities of the cast and the crew. Um, and, and also Danielle and I talked a bit about um, ahead, of ahead of shooting, you know, where in the shooting schedule would you, would you be ready to shoot the scene in the funeral home? You know, and I wanted her to tell me what is best for her um, performance wise. So that's from my perspective, I'm sure everybody else has their contributions. We laughed. And we laughed. We joked. We cut up. Yes. I sang gospel music and I'm not a gospel singer. Like <laughs> you have black yeah. experience, it calls for black humor, black levity. Um, and we had that. We had that. And we had community. Yes. Nobody's doing it alone. Yes. You know? um, um, and that kind of critical care that you know is talking about that was around the the whole aura and vibe of the of the production so we 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 knew we had a mission we were on a mission yeah. we have an intention uh, a rich intention but um you have to have fun and joy along the way yes. bring the levity whoopee would cut up in between takes Correct. <laughs> she was hilarious mm -hmm. we had chocolates you know mm -hmm. i mean yeah it's, it's yeah it was joy you know I, I always remember there was Every time to show up to set, it was the joy uh, was the word like that was printed on the sign to the set of joy or to joy set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which was really just like a, a conscious as well as subconscious reminder that that could also be a part of making yeah. a film. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was just also part of the work. film too. There is still yeah. joy and love and community you know, alongside the inherent sadness of parts of the story, you know? Yeah, Sorry, so I, I it carried that. over is what I'm saying. It was present. Yeah. With Jalen, you want to go? Oh, well, um, well, yeah, she she pretty much hit it right on the nail. You know, my mom is my biggest support system. So she she wouldn't allow any sadness because she is a grade A mother, you know. And uh, it, it was a, it was a um it was a process for the both of us though, because as as much as I was, you know, in that headspace getting ready for it, she seen me as, you know, her son, you know, going into this. And now that, you know, kind of put her in that mindset. But we had each other as we always have. Um and yeah, you know, just being a kid at the end of the day. And she's hilarious. I'm gonna tell you, this girl right here, this girl Danielle, she's an amazing this actor. woman. <laughs> this woman, I'm sorry. Brown woman. But she <laughs> has like five personalities that she would get to meet. Like they're like, there are five of them and she's hilarious. And then Chinoye, she laughs and makes us all laugh. And, you know, everybody just has their own personality that I really, really would like to, you know, emulate going down the line. Okay, mm. Len. <laughs> <laughs> for me, um, from the producer standpoint, I, I've been in this space of 
celebrating and mourning at the same time. Again, I knew Mother Mobley extremely well. Um, this was her dream to get a story like this on the big screen. She wanted her story told. And to witness Danielle's performance and everyone's performance on this film was an emotional roller coaster for me. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, that I don't talk about this much, but I'm, I'm just gonna say it here. But when Danielle did the viewing scene, um, I don't know, they may have told some members of the cast what happened. I just broke down. I completely broke down because I really, all I ever wanted to do was to resurrect my mentor and Danielle was able to do it. Um, and, but it was also very hard for me to, to see my friend go through this tragedy once again because I, I, I feel that Dan, Danielle, she was, and to witness that and, you know, all the, all the conversations that I had with her, now seeing it for myself on screen ha, taking place, I started second guessing if it was the right thing for us to do because I had never witnessed those feelings that it was coming over me before. And it was done so well. I mean, you could have heard, it was storming that day. I don't know if everybody, it was storming. It was cold, it was storming, it was raining. And we were all under this producer's tent. And you can, you can hear a pin drop in the middle of a storm. That's how quiet it was when Danielle actually did this scene. And I had chills all over my body. Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> I had to get up and walk away. But I say this to say, you know, all Mother Mobley ever wanted was this story to be told on the right way. She always said to me, you don't need creative licensing. You just need to tell the story because that's where everyone else had failed. People have been trying to do this film, and I don't know if you know this, for 67 years. 47 years for Mother Mobley herself. You know, even after her son's death in 1955, she had an opportunity to produce a film. She actually had two film deals right after his death, but it was never, the film was never made. All the way up to her passing, this has been her fight. One On one end, justice for Emmett. On the other end, making sure that the story is told to a broader audience. She wanted it on the big screen. We were able to do that, and I'm just so you know so happy that this team came together to make that happen because it's another promise for me fulfilled. Mm -hmm.